Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to look at cephalosporins and together with all the generations of cephalosporins. Cephalosporins are antibiotics which belong to a class known as beta lactam antibiotics, similar to penicillins. There are five generations of cephalosporins, and their naming has a prefix cep. Cephalosporins are known to be bactericidal antibiotics, meaning they kill the bacteria. These antibiotics work by inhibiting cell wall synthesis. The beta lactam ring binds to a receptor known as penicillin binding protein. These proteins normally cross link and strengthen the bacterial cell walls. Therefore, once it's disrupted by these antibiotics, the cell walls of bacteria weakens. We have five generations of cephalosporins, that's from the first generation to the fifth generation. Each successful cephalosporin generation has an improvement in the spectrum of activity and in some pharmacologic properties. This greatly explains the clinical uses of these drugs because they are the most common used antibiotics besides penicillins. The later generations are sometimes known as extended spectrum cephalosporins or ESCs. Let's now look at the adverse effects or the side effects of cephalosporins in general. The use of cephalosporins is associated with skin rashes, pruritus, and Steven Johnson syndrome. We discussed this Steven Johnson syndrome in our previous video, and nausea and vomiting together with diarrhea. Scissors or convulsions are associated with the use of a drug known as cefepine. Nephrotoxicity and allergic reactions is common to these antibiotics. The contraindications mainly to cephalosporins are hypersensitivity to cephalosporins themselves or hypersensitivity to general antibiotics which belong to a class known as the beta lactam antibiotics, for example, penicillins. Let's move on to the first generation cephalosporins. This class of cephalosporins contain the phrase FA, that's F A or P H A. Examples of the first generation cephalosporins include cefazoline. This is available in intravenous or intramuscular form. Another one is known as cephalexin, commonly known as keflex. This drug is available in an oral formulation, so it's used orally. Other examples are cephadroxyl, cephalothin, cefapirine, and cefradine. Like you can see, all they have this phrase FA. This will help you in the remembrance. The first generation cephalosporins have a good activity against most gram positive bacteria, for example, group A and B streptococcus, staphylococcus, aerobic cocci, and viridans. These cephalosporins have some activity to gram negative but is a low activity, for example, S. Gelicia coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and Proteus mirabilis. This cephalosporin class is not active against Enterococcus, Bacteroides fragilis, or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. But it has some anaerobic coverage, though it's inadequate, against Haemophilus influenzae and Morazella catalaris. The infections treated with first generation cephalosporins are uncomplicated and community acquired soft tissue and skin infections. These infections are presumed to be caused by the susceptible bacteria which are the Staphylococci and Streptococci. We also use these antibiotics in the surgical prophylaxis of surgical patients, treatment of uncomplicated urinary tract infections, respiratory tract infections, otitis media, and some orthopedic injuries. The second generation cephalosporins. The second generation cephalosporins include cefotetan, cefiroxim, cefproxil, cefoxitin, cefometazole, cefaclol. In the mastery of the examples of second generation cephalosporins, we shall actually appreciate it once we read the end of this video because we have drugs like which don't fall to any other class, thus everything else. So we shall discuss this once we read at the end of the video so that you can appreciate the meaning of these everything else. They have a similar activity to first generation cephalosporins, 
This second generation cephalosporins have a slightly less activity against staphylococci and aerobic cocci. They are not actively against uh, methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and enterococci. So they cover more non enterococci streptococci. Another point is that the second generation cephalosporins are active against gram negative microbes more than the first generation. Its activity is uh, pronounced in aerobes, Murazera catraris, Neisseria meningitidis, and Seracia species. Cephiroxium, in this case, has an activity against Haemophilus influenza, unlike other examples of the second generation cephalosporins. Cephoxetin and cephotetan, on the other hand, are known to cover oral anaerobes. What are the infections treated by the second generation cephalosporins? We use the second generation cephalosporins in surgical prophylaxis such as the first generation, pneumococcal pneumonia, treatment of community acquired respiratory tract infections, mixed aerobic and anaerobic infections surgical prophylaxis, and treatment of uncomplicated urinary tract infections. Now let's move to the third generation cephalosporins. The third generation cephalosporins include ceftriaxone, which is the most common in this case, cefotaxime, ceftazidime, cefixim, ceftinil, ceftibutin, and cefpodoxime. As you can see, these examples contain the first 10 IM or ON. Something unique with this uh, third generation cephalosporin is that they cross the blood brain barrier. And for this case, ceftriaxone is the most common drug used in the treatment of bacterial meningitis because it can cross the blood brain barrier and treat the infection in the cerebral spinal fluid. These bacteria have less coverage against gram-positive bacteria, but have improved uh, activity against gram-negative bacteria. For you can realize, as we move from the first generation to the next generation, we have an in increased sensitivity against gram-negative and a reduced sensitivity against gram-positive bacteria. These uh, third generations are also active against oral anaerobes, and not active against enterococci, actinobacter, listeria, and methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. The third generation cephalosporins also have an extended coverage against gram negative bacteria, like we have noted. These antibiotics have an increased activity against enterobacteria, but they don't have any active against pseudomonas except one of them, which is ceftazidine. So in third generation cephalosporins, ceftazidine is the one that's able to treat pseudomona infections. An extended spectrum beta-lactamase bacteria are resistant against third generation cephalosporins. What are the common infections to which we use the third generation cephalosporins in their treatment? We have pneumococcal infections, gram-negative meningitis. In this case, we use ceftriaxone, osteoacquired respiratory in tract infections, community-acquired respiratory tract infections, skin and soft tissue infections, blood infections, and complicated respiratory tract infections. Like we said, ceftazidine has an activity against pseudomonas. Let's move to the fourth generation cephalosporins. This class contains the phrase pi, that is cefepim and cefpiron. These are the two examples of the fourth generation cephalosporins that are in existence, and they are available in parental form just like the third generation cephalosporins. This also closed the blood brain barrier and they have an increased activity than the previous generation. These drugs are active against streptococcus pneumoniae, group S and B streptococci, and they have an increased activity against gram-negative bacteria more than the third generation.
this also are active against dominance and against Russia, Proteus, Actinobacter, Citrobacter, and Enterobacter. These uh, five microorganisms are known as the space microorganisms. That is the Seracia species, Proteus, Actinobacter, Citrobacter, and Enterobacter. But the fourth generation cephalosporins do not have an activity against Bacteroides flagellus. Therefore, let's just look at the infections which are treated using the fourth generation cephalosporins. In this case, we use pseudomonal infections because this class has an increased activity against pseudomonas. We use it to treat gram negative bacterial meningitis because they can cross the blood brain barrier. And these are also used in the treatment of antibiotic resistant infections. Let's move to the last generation of uh, the cephalosporins, that's the fifth generation. In the fifth generation, they have a phrase known as Roll. An example of a fifth generation cephalosporin is ceftaroline. The drug is, is active against methylene resistant Staphylococcus aureus, but is less active against Pesugansum compared to the fourth generation cephalosporins. Ceftaroline doesn't have any activities against Pseudomonas. Ceftaroline is less active against gram negative organisms. The widespread use of several sporins in empiric treatment has also added in the development of multi-drug resistance bacteria and encouraged the spread of resistance.